Hello beautiful people, my name is Amanda Zitto. This is Maggie and she's going to be my guest today and we're going to talk about what dispersed camping is and the rules involved that you should know about so you don't get in trouble. Maggie, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Actually, like, when did we first meet? Do you even remember when we first met? Three years ago? We met at like a torque bench event or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was torque benches, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I met Amanda here in Portland. Uh, I used to be part of the Moped community here, but decided I wanted to pursue a career in natural resources. So I decided to live on the road full time in my uh, 82 Toyota pickup truck. You know, fast forward a couple months, I started working as a park ranger for the MPS at Crater Lake and uh, in my between season when I'm not working I travel so I've been on the road for the past six months living in my truck and I go back to work next week at Redwoods National Park. Yay! Yeah. Maggie is here to uh, help me clarify some points because she's done a lot of dispersed camping and boondocking herself. Dispersed camping means that there are no toilets, there's no trash cans, there's no fire grates, there's no potable water, there's nothing. There's no picnic tables, there's just nothing. <laughs> there are lots of different places you can do it, but the main three that you want to focus on are National Forest, Bureau of Land Management sites, otherwise known as the BLM, or at National Grasslands. Um, those generally have a pretty open rule around uh, where you can camp unless it's close to like another nat natural, uh, natural resource like uh, a national park. So for example, like if you're gonna go to Crater Lake, right up against it is like the Rogue Siskiyou National Forest. The areas that are right up against the park you should not be camping in because they're just too close to the resource. So stay away from them. So in general, there are a couple of rules that you should be aware of and follow if you plan to disperse camp and any of the things that we've listed. Make sure before you go out that you check the rules and regulations in your state or your area though. This video could be old, things could have changed, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and really the best thing you can do if you have any question is go to the authority that runs the site, go to the National Forest Ranger Station, go talk to the folks at the BLM. They're gonna be able to give you the most up-to-date rules and regulations and places where you can disperse camp. Any place that you camp, even, even if you're gonna camp in a designated campground, you should follow leave no trace principles. The most basic and like strongest rule around leave no trace is um, take only photos, leave only footprints. This also includes, um, you know, if you're on, in a motorcycle in a car, if you have a vehicle that leaks any type of fluid whatsoever, you have to make sure they have a pan under your bike or under your truck, something that's gonna catch any of the extra fluid because that fluid is gonna run off into the watershed and then it can poison the area. So. That is really important too. There's a lot of extra steps to doing disperse and you just have to be on top of it. So plan ahead and be prepared. Do research about the places that you're gonna go. <laughs> yeah, also that means um, don't just blindly follow Google Maps to wherever it thinks you're supposed to go. Bring an actual map. I've, as a ranger, I found that people will just follow Google Maps until it just leads them off a cliff to death. You can just go to the ranger station and get a map from them about the area that you're camping in so that you can just like go from there and figure it out. Yeah. And if you're extra prepared, you can get a topographical map so you know how high up you're going to yeah. be camping. And yes. that way you can also prepare more directly for the elements that you're going to be in. A lot of mountain campsites are going to be way colder. So even though you're at a lower elevation and it feels totally fine and you can take a 50 degree bag, doesn't mean that 50 degree bag is going to do you much good once you get up in the mountains. Yeah. Also, being prepared for weather in general is a good idea. Um, National forest roads are not plowed during the winter time. No. So if you have a favorite campground, you may not be able to access it during the winter. It may also just be closed. With weather, it's not just about knowing what the weather is going to be like, depending on elevation and location, but also just making sure that you pack correctly. All the layers. All the layers. It doesn't matter where you are. It's going to get cold everywhere. Even if you're in the desert and it's like 80 to 90 degrees during the day, it could very, very possibly get down to 30 at night. Um, so having all those options to be warm so that you don't freeze to death is yes. a good thing. Layering is such an important thing when camping in general. Um, having a base layer, a thermal layer, and a insulating layer, and as well as like a wind and rain protection layer. And staying off the ground. And staying off the ground. Another thing about being prepared is always let people know where you're going mm -hmm. uh, well, and like how long you intend to stay. If you're not telling people that you have around you, you don't have a good support network of people who you know, care at all. Just go to the ranger station again, let them know, hey, I'm gonna be dispersed camping in this general area. I'm planning on being here for this much time. Most of the time when people go missing, it's a bit, 
they don't even they never told anybody where they went in the first place. Yep. When you are picking your campsite and dispersed camping, you want to make sure that the place that you're going to put your tent is durable ground. Don't park in a wash. <laughs> yes. That's the worst idea. <laughs> yeah, just be aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. um, if it looks like water went through there at some point, it might go through there again. So you probably shouldn't camp there. You should camp on bare soil if possible so that you avoid damaging or killing uh, plants and grass. <laughs> Dispose of your waste properly. Mm -hmm. This isn't just your toilet paper, but also uh, cigarette butts, your trash, water bottles, aluminum foil, beer cans. Cigarette butts are a really big one too because a, a lot of fires start with cigarette butts. Don't leave them on the ground. It, it's I know it's such a habit to just throw them down. Pick them up. Generally, if you're motorcycle camping, even in a designated campground, you should bring a Ziploc bag with you that's just for trash. Like generally, like for me, I only take like a one gallon and that's plenty enough for the trash that I produce while I'm at camp. Um, but that way you have something that's sealed so you don't have to smell it and uh, you put all of your trash in there and then you can empty it out when you get to a designated trash can that you know is going to be emptied by somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Disposing of your waste correctly thing, if you go to a site and you see trash there, pick it up mm -hmm. and leave take it, it out. Yes, leave it better than you found it. Yes. Um, if you go to a place and you disperse camp there and there's a bunch of trash when you get there, pick up as much as you can. I know that you can't like, be a one-man team and clean the whole site, yeah. but just take a pe couple pieces of yeah. trash. It does, like, it really does benefit the landscape. It's easier to complain about how trash it is than actually make the effort to clean it. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's an area, you know, do your part to clean it, but if it is really bad, let the rangers know. Should we talk about uh, pooping in the woods? Yeah, we should talk about pooping, pooping in, the in the woods. It's a thing. <laughs> yes. You can literally, like, go get a shovel, specifically if you're digging cat holes mm -hmm. and they'll have like markers on the shovel that tell you how deep you have to dig that yes. you have to dig yeah um when you do a cat hole yeah you don't have to dig a trench you just it's a small hole and you know there is the real fun game of like balancing yourself while you go and always feeling like someone's watching you even though you're out in the middle of nowhere you're fine just do it um but when you you know after you do your thing just cover it back up stomp it down mm -hmm. Make sure it looks like you were never doing anything there. Mm -hmm. Also make sure that the cat hole that you're digging is minimum 200 feet away from any water source so that you're not uh, contaminating. Yes, polluting. <laughs> Another one is leave what you find. Like if you find a bunch of pretty flowers, just leave them there. If you pick them, they can't grow in the future. Yes. I mean, it might be something as simple as like, I really like this rock because it's cute. Leave it there. Just leave it there. You don't, you don't need an extra rock. Just like let it go. It's fine. Minimize your campfire impacts. It is technically legal on national forest land to make a campfire ring outside of a designated campground, but just don't do it. If unless it's like a extreme sort of survival scenario where you like desperately need heat, there's no reason why you should be building a fire. I know it's like a fun thing to do, mm -hmm. but if it's like July. It's, you know, 80 degrees out, you're in the woods, it's dry, it hasn't rained for months. There's no reason why you should be starting a fire at all. Mm -hmm. If you're dispersed camping, don't set up a campfire. Just kind of make it a rule that you're just going to cook on your little butane stove right. and uh, leave that alone. If you really, if you really want that campfire experience, just like find a, just like a designated campground that yep. already has designated camp rings, um, pits, and that kind of stuff. Because um, those areas have already been designated for campfires designated campgrounds and national forests like 10 or 12 bucks they're not that yeah. much yeah and real, i feel like most of the time people want to build a fire to like experience the like the campfire experience and they're inviting other people even if you um practice good lnt practices this does not mean the people that are with you do yeah. so if you're gonna be looking for that type of like outdoor experience with a group do it in a designated campsite because yeah. those places are accommodating the lack of education around all this stuff. <laughs> yes. So just stay out of the dispersed areas in that scenario. Oh. Respect wildlife. Don't feed the wildlife. <laughs> Don't try to touch it. Like view it from a distance. Always give animals like 30 feet minimum. Of, you know, if you're, if you're looking at like moose, deer, big things, especially you shouldn't be feeding chipmunks because they're cute at all. Just leave them alone. There's like, there's a totally separate topic there about bears as well and being bear aware and containing your food, how to hang your food properly. Um, I will link resources down in the description specifically about how to uh, handle camping when you're in a bear or active bear area. Be considerate of others. 
definitely. If you see other people that are dispersed camping, give them their space. You really have to um, protect yourself and by protecting yourself, you respect others. Mm -hmm. You do really have to be super aware of your surroundings and the other people that are out there because you never know what you're gonna run into. Yeah. I hate saying that one. It, we're not trying to scare you away, <laughs> but there are definitely things that you need to be aware of yeah. and be prepared for. Yeah. And personal safety is definitely one of them. Also be considerate of others. Like if you end up camping in an area that's super popular, if you camp like close to an already designated campground, make sure that you keep the volume down. You know, like yeah. use earplugs, like don't use like a big external speaker like it disrupts others around you from enjoying the nature that we're all there to experience when you think about disperse really uh in the correct scenario it looks like no one's been there actually like thousands of people could have camped in the exact same spot that you are but if everyone is like correctly utilizing the lnt principles you shouldn't know that yeah, you shouldn't be able to tell that anybody has been there ever. Yeah. Those are just some general leave no trace principles. I will also leave a link in the description to the leave no trace website so that you can do your own research. Moving on to some rules that you should be aware of when trying to find dispersed camping in national forests specifically. You have to be 100 to 200 feet away from any water source, trail, or designated road, and you can't be visible from the road. Mm -hmm. and make sure that you don't camp in a meadow or any kind of clearing. Um, if other people walk through the area, they want to be able to see the nature, not your tent and your dirty socks. You also can't go more than 300 feet off of any designated road to find your campsite. In national forests and BLM land, dispersed campers are only allowed to stay for 14 days and you can't return to that place for the next 30 days. Don't try to level or dig trenches in the ground. Um, pick a campsite that's already level so you don't have to do that. Dig cat holes instead of pit trenches to go to the bathroom in and make sure that you cover them up. <laughs> and just some things that you should be aware of when you go out and try to find camping, you should take note of any signage you see. Uh, this includes leased logging lands. Um, a lot of places in the PNW, there are sections of the national forest that will be leased by logging companies. Um, and that is for all intents and purposes, private property until they're done. You won't even really notice that a part of like a BLM land is actually privately owned Mm -hmm. ranch land or something like that you really have to pay attention to that stuff to make sure that you actually aren't trespassing because a lot of those folks will come out and they'll they'll let you know about it if you're <laughs> they don't want you there be aware of signage um overnight uh camping is not allowed at trailheads or day use areas unless otherwise marked most day use signs will say on it like no camping um, right. there'll be like a little tent symbol and there'll be an x through it right so if you do decide to make a fire um, make sure that you never leave it unattended um, you need to make sure you keep an eye on your fire at all times. You, you, make, you never want to have it um, just like on the ground. Make sure it's in a designated camp ring. I know a lot of times people will make a, a fire ring with stones. That's not actually a fire pit mm -hmm. at all. <laughs> That's just people piling some rocks so they can build a fire. Uh, after you have your fire, you're watching it all the time and you decide to put it out, you need to douse it with a ton of water. Yep. ton of water. And a then lot. afterwards, you actually want to dig like mm -hmm. dig dig the ground churn it up and then keep pouring water on it because a lot of times um the heat will like travel through the ground and that can start fires elsewhere like yes to start for you your spot in Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. general rule if you can like put your hand down in it and it's still warm you're not done yet right. fires are a hassle like don't even bother it's so much work yeah like it is so much work like even when i'm at a designated campground i still won't make a fire because most of the time i've traveled a lot that day and I'm already tired. I just want to make my food and then right. go to bed. Generally for dispersing any kind of wastewater, like if you wash your body or if you wash your dishes, you want to dispose of that wastewater minimum 200 feet from any kind of water source, including washouts or anything that looks like water could have gone through it at any point in time. And Maggie and I use this method where we try to <laughs> spread the water as far and as wide as possible. So do okay. your dishes like and that kind of stuff and then use it and dump it like make sure you're using stuff that's biodegradable <laughs> and things that aren't going to harm the environment because if you're just pouring soap straight onto the ground it's not really it's not great best. it's not great even on blm land when you're trying to find dispersed camping you should opt for areas that look like they've already been established and camped in before so that you're not doing further damage to other parts of the natural area in my experience on um, dispersed camping in national forests there are a lot of areas like where you can go off of, there'll be like some kind of split road that goes off the main road and it'll go up a little ways and a little dead end. And you can normally tell if somebody's camped there before. 
Um, and normally that's a good bet to camp so that you don't have to leave your bike on the side of the road. And that's normally what I do. It's one of those things where, again, where you need to go talk to the ranger. Because in my experience, like uh, in Custer National Forest, they said that it was totally fine for me to go a little bit off the road with my bike as long as I wasn't destroying any plants or anything like that. And I was, uh, I think it was 150 feet away from the road and I was allowed to take my bike um, and be able to camp next to it and make sure that my bike and my tent weren't visible from the road. Right. Obviously that's gonna be different in different states and different natural areas for sure. The general rule is try not to destroy anything. Don't take your bike off road if it's not an area that's not meant to be taken off road. And talk to the ranger, make sure that if you do take your bike a little bit off of the path just so that you can set up camp behind a tree or something so that you're not visible from the main road, um, that that's okay. And that you're not going to destroy any kind of natural environment that may be protected there. Yeah. A lot of times if you are taking a bike into the national forest or, you know, a, a potentially dispersed area like that, uh, they have, uh, like designated OHV staging grounds. Yes. So you can almost always camp in the OHV staging areas because mm -hmm. they're specifically set up for people with dirt bikes and quads yeah. and stuff like loading and offloading. So if you kind of want to get more of that, like OHV, like I'm going to ride my dirt bike on the trail sort of feel, mm -hmm. that's going to be your best bet for you can set up camp. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks so much to Maggie for being here and helping me explain no the rules. Make sure that you guys stay tuned for the next video where I'm gonna be talking about how to find free camping resources that you can use to find camping, motorcycle camping and that kind of stuff. Huge thank you to my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to support me for as little as $1 a month, you can get early access to videos like these and all of my motorcycle art. If that is not up your alley, I have a Redbubble shop where you can get shirts like these. <laughs> Link in the description. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you later. <laughs> it's weird selling myself next to another person. <laughs> it's fun, it's fun. Support this lady, she does awesome things. Aw, thank true. you. Thank you. Be prepared is like a, a pretty all like encompassing. Yes, yeah. It's just like, just be smart. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm such a jerk. I'm just like, you just know better. You guys just know better than that. <laughs> oh, this one drives me crazy. Don't put glitter on anything. I know this sounds really ridiculous, but people go out and uh, microplastics are a really big deal. Mm -hmm. They affect lots of small wildlife, especially in like streams and rivers and things. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've gone out and there's like, Glitter spread everywhere and it makes me crazy. I'm like, what? I know it's like a dreamy, beautiful place and you'll want to believe you're in fairyland, but like, you're just destroying things. Don't put it on the ground. So those are just some general leave no price. Bleh. Price? Price. Those are just some general leave no price. <laughs> <laughs> those are some general leave no price. Oh my God. Leave no place. My leave no trace. Trace, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those are some leave no trace principles.